and welcome to Retro Zone, the show where anything retro goes. Today's topic is something I've wanted to cover on the channel for a long time, and I'm so excited to finally get to talk about it. But before we delve into it, we need to go back in time to... The 90s. Ah, the 90s. A time where you'd be wearing Kappa Popper pants, snap bands, hats to the side, and playing your Sega Mega Drive or Super Nintendo. Even though new technology was coming to the playgrounds with the handheld gaming systems like the Game Boy, it was a low-tech toy that drove kids crazy in the playgrounds and made a lasting impression on the 90s generation. The low-tech toy I'm discussing today has an interesting history that I think a lot of people didn't know about back then and still don't know about today. So without further ado, let's look at Pogs. Ah yes, Pogs. The fun game that as said drove kids crazy in the playgrounds and even led to some schools banning the game. It's a simple concept to pick up and play but takes time to master. You collect milk cap sized discs that features all kinds of designs and once you feel you have enough you can challenge opponents. To play the game you and your opponent contribute an equal amount of caps, put them into a stack facing down, take a heavier cap which is called a slammer and then throw it down on top of the stack. The stack will spring up and the caps will scatter. Any caps that are face up, you keep those caps and the player with the most caps at the end is the winner. So now that you know the rules of Pogs, if I may, let me take you through the history of this iconic game. Some history would say our story begins in Hawaii with a mixed fruit drink. However, I'd like to take you back further to Edo period Japan. The Japanese Edo period was between the years of 1603 and 1867 and at this time a popular Japanese game called Menko was created. Now the rules of Menko are very simple, you have a set of playing pieces which are either shaped like milk caps or cards. You lay your pieces down and your opponent tries to flip them over. The rules to this sound very similar don't you think? The Menko playing pieces feature images of Japanese cultural icons like wrestlers and warriors. In the early 20th century the Japanese began to immigrate to Hawaii. They were doing this so they could work in agriculture. With the immigration they brought Menko with them so now Menko was being played in Japan and Hawaii. In the 1950s Menko evolved as kids in Hawaii began to use milk caps as their playing pieces. The main source of the milk caps was a dairy product called Pog, which was a mixed fruit drink that was originally sold in glass bottles. When the glass bottles were discontinued, the company kept making the caps so the game could continue to be played. With this, the name of the game was changing from Menko to Pog, as players just began to call it Pog. Over the years, the game pretty much disappeared from existence, and some people saw this as the end to the game. Then, in the early 90s, an unlikely source brought new life to the game. In an elementary school in Oahu, a teacher by the name of Blossom Galipso introduced the game to students in her class. She used the game as a means to teach maths to a 5th grade class and as a non-violent alternative to other playground games. Then the game started to spread and by 1993 the game took over the world with the help of the newly formed World of Pog Federation. With the WPF Pogs came a source of advertising for companies, as this was a great way to get images from movies and TV shows to kids. So anything that was big in pop culture at the time got a Pog made of it. So we got to see Pogs of things like Power Rangers, Animaniacs, Batman, Disney, Nintendo and that's just scratching the surface. Pogs also contained original snazzy designs used for the self-branded Pogs. The World Pog Federation also brought a mascot to put on their products to make them instantly recognisable to kids. His name, of course, was Pogman, and he was kind of like a 
caveman looking guy that was mixed with surfer dude who would be used on all pog marketing. So when you would visit your local shop or comic book store and buy yourself a pack of pogs, but what would you get in the pack? Well, I have some unopened packs here to show you what's inside. So inside would be a card which tells you how to play pogs and on the back would be a list of all the pogs in that particular series so you could tick off which ones you have whilst collecting the set. Then you would get a standard set of pogs and one slammer. But unfortunately not everything was good for pogs. The playground where it all started and thrived also became the reason for its demise. You may remember from the start of the video when I took you through the rules of pogs that any pog that was face up would be kept by the player. Well, there was one little aspect that I didn't mention and that's before you start playing you determine if you want to play for keeps or not. This means that any pogs you keep during the gameplay become your property. So that fancy limited edition pog that you spent ages trying to get into your collection could end up being lost during a game with an opponent. Parents and teachers didn't like this aspect of the game as this was essentially a kid version of gambling. In the classroom, students would be distracted as they'd be showing off their collections or planning their next match. In the playground, pogs would end up being the reason two students would start fighting. Eventually, pogs were banned in schools in the United States, Canada, Sweden, Iceland, Germany, the UK and Australia. As the target audience for the game were unable to play it in school, this led to the end of the craze. By the mid 90s, pogs were just a memory like Furbies, Cabbage Patch Kids and all other toy fads. Now my memory of pogs is a little bit weird if I'm honest. I don't remember actually collecting pogs but I do remember just one day having a huge collection of them. I remember used to be able to get them in Happy Meals, cereal packets and crisps but the main thing for me was collecting all the movies, TV shows and video games that I loved on Pogs because as said previously anything that was big in pop culture was put on a Pog and as well I didn't really play the game that much either maybe once or twice but that was about it as said the collecting aspect was the big thing for me so as my memory is not the best if I'm honest I decided to reach out to some of my favourite YouTubers and ask them guys to give you a rundown of their memory, so I'll hand it over to those guys. Thanks Dan for having me on. Uh, yeah, so Pogs to me were pretty short lived, but I did get to play in them for a little bit there. And it was kind of, um, I remember the summer of probably like 1993, I think is when I really started playing with those things. It didn't last for that long, but um, I did have some friends that were playing with them. And one thing that was cool is that you really just needed a couple to get started and a little bit of luck um, and a good slammer. And if you had that good slammer, you could start winning pogs pretty quick. You could take a stack like this and turn into a pretty large stack. In fact, they had those plastic stacks that you could use, uh, which was pretty awesome. I actually started to collect a bunch of weird eight ball ones because you know back then it was like cool and it's kind of funny I don't have the uh, pogs anymore but what I do have is this guitar strap and this guitar strap um, is like an eight ball guitar strap like this right so this is one of my first guitar straps ever and all this glue that's on here that's where pogs used to be I used to put a pog here I put a pog there and they were all eight balls and they had like skulls and everything and I think just over the years they fell off because I did actually start playing shows and yeah they would just pop off so all I have is this and then actually my pog collection is really small because it's just this group of pogs right here and these I got from a recent game a new game which I'm gonna be doing a video on my channel at some point but it's called straight and it was done by, it was released by Special Reserve Games, so pretty cool. Um, it's basically got like the characters from the game. So this one says like Carrier, uh, this one says Steroids, uh, so kind of unusual. Um, this one says Rip. And they're, I love these because they're definitely like kind of old school. This one says um, Glutton. Is it Glutton? I'm not really sure. Looks kind of cool. Um, this is Strafe, that's the name of the game, so that's just the logo. Uh, Brick. I actually haven't played the game yet, I'm about to play it so I can get some footage for it. Here's another one, Strafe. And 
and uh, that is crazy. It's like some guy's face peeling off and acid wrench. So yeah, these are definitely the enemies. Pixel Titans. And then I don't know what this is. It looks like the logo, maybe Special Reserve. It says TV or I don't know what this is. I'm not sure what this thing is. Anyway, so yeah, I definitely got into these and the slammer thing was awesome. I liked I like it when you can go. It was, was kind of like a thing of gambling almost, except you were playing with money, you're playing with pogs. And if you're good enough, yeah, you just get a huge collection rolling so anyway that's my uh that's my pog memory it just didn't last very long i started high school and basically a few months into that i was on to other things i basically was like Ugh, screw pogs i don't even remember what happened to all my pog sets but i did have one of those plastic things i had a couple slammers and yeah like a huge stack of pogs i just have no clue where they are anyway thanks again so pogs 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 now if you were a kid growing up in the 90s chances are you know exactly what pogs are now pogs were a pretty huge part of my life from the early to mid 90s and more so from a collector standpoint i think i only actually played it as a game maybe four or five times but i sure did like collecting them and uh some i can remember collecting were the spawn pogs the x-men pogs i think i even had some beavis and butthead ones but what ended up happening with me is I started to lose interest in the Pogs themselves and only started collecting the Slammers. It was kind of like, I don't know, a coin collecting kind of thing. And the Slammers were always the coolest thing about Pogs to me. And that, my friends, is my Pog memory. And see, I was really into collecting, especially with a friend of mine. Um, and for us, it was more about finding the coolest Pogs, really, than anything else. Um, and uh, whether it was a different shape or uh, had a superhero or a cartoon character or something like that on it, uh, cool phrases, colors, stuff like that. Um, and we would go to a supermarket that was not far from where we grew up and uh, they just had this massive tub full of pogs just mounted and we would dig and dig and dig through them um, looking for the coolest ones. And then when we got home, we'd sort of share with, what, with each other what we had found. My favorites were sort of the uh, saw blade shape ones that had sort of like the serrated edge to them. Um, I don't know why I was drawn to those, but I had a ton of those. Now, of course, over time, we both got out of the sort of collecting Pogs game. Um, and when we did that, he, he got out a little bit before I did. Um, he gave his entire collection over to me. Um, and I still have them somewhere. Where they are right now, though, is anybody's guess. Um, but yeah, those are my memories about these curious little insignificant amazing pieces of printed cardboard. Hi, I'm Andy from Potato Power and I'm going to share my memories with you considering Pox, collecting Pox back in the 90s uh, after school was such an awesome thing. So many different colors, so many different shapes and I, I just loved it back then. <sighs> I will show you my Pox collection. I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan. Let's have a look. This is Sub-Zero without the mask. We have Striker here. We have Muta, Nightwolf, Liu Kang. We have Shao Kahn. He Sonya. You can see his Cabal, Shao Kahn, Muta. And we have Shiva, Cheng Sung. Sexy. We have Mortal Kombat. So yeah, it was such an awesome thing to collect back in the 90s. And it's such a big part of my childhood. I love these things. Such a big part of my childhood. Sparkle and glitter on it. This is my childhood box. Is this lustig or not? When I, it's just like when I go in there. It's just like nobody cares. They are in the box. I like them so much. Such an awesome memory. Um, such a big part of my childhood. I love these things and such a big part of my childhood, childhood, childhood. I wish I could make them like a part of me. That would be so awesome. Wait a moment.
fight. fight. <laughs> you will suck. You will never lose. Finish him. Fatality. Flawless victory. Hey everybody, Dan from Oddpod here, and I love Pogs. Uh, if you hadn't guessed, huge part of the 90s for me. Absolutely adored Pogs so much, and still do to this day. For such a simple toy, I just went so crazy for them. I mean, they're just pieces of cardboard with pictures on them, but I loved them. I had the Pog Maker, as you can see there. Pog Man, as you can see there. Pog Books, so many Pogs. My favourite ones were probably Mad Monster Capsules, I think they were called. I still need to get some of those. Uh, I had so many Pog things, finding Pogs in your packets of crisps and stuff like that. And So as well as collecting Pogs, I also played the game a lot. Absolutely loved it, and I remember one time I played for keeps against a friend. And I lost over 200 Pogs, and like most kids would do, I cried. <laughs> yeah, I had a little cry, and I cried to his older sister, who made him give them back to me. And yeah, that was a, that was a sad day. <laughs> but I, I loved Pogs so much, and like I said, I still do to this day. They're just... I don't know what it is about them. They're just awesome. So, yeah, uh, back to Dan. And I'll just have to clean up this mess. Wow, those were some great memories there. I just want to say a massive thank you to the guys who got involved with this. It was a huge deal for me to get these guys on my channel. And for them to take time out of their day to put a little video together for me was absolutely amazing. So thank you very much. And you guys can say thank you to those guys by checking out their channels in the links below in the description. Please subscribe to their channels as they make awesome content and you will not be disappointed so once again thank you to everyone who got involved well that about wraps it up for this episode of retro zone and let me know in the comments if you collected pogs back in the day do you still have some left well let us know which ones you have in the comments and let me know your memories as well of pogs as i love reading your memories in the comments so thank you very much for watching take care and i'll see you next time hey guys thanks for checking out this video it's really appreciated and a massive thank you goes out to Lee Foster, who's one of my supporters on Patreon. If you want to become a supporter yourself, then please hit that Patreon button to find out more. If you want to see more great content like this, then please hit that subscribe button, and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks again.